schools can be chaotic places. But one thing you can count on is that every student is different. Exhibit A, Justine. She is constantly in motion. She's probably a kinesthetic learner. That means she has to touch things or do a physical activity in order to truly understand something. Or take our resident doodler, Shauna. <laughs> Clearly a textbook visual learner. <laughs> two students, two very different learning styles. And that's not even to mention auditory learners. Whoa, now, hold up. Didn't learning styles, well, go out of style? Did my glorious mullet go out of style? Learning styles are the hottest craze. Seriously, all the trendiest educators are using them to tailor their instructions to their individual students. I don't know who you're talking to. Guilty as charged. Isabella and I have been lunching together ever since they closed the faculty lounge for toxic mold emanating from a six-week-old empanada. Mm, you again. All right, let's get this over with. What minor detail do I have wrong now? Well, I reckon it's more than minor, Sonny. It's the whole enchilada. I thought you said it was an empanada. Ooh, here's the lowdown, mullethead. Students like Justine and Shauna are most certainly different. And yes, they probably have different preferences. But studies designed to test whether matching teaching styles to these individual preferences actually help students learn better have found no benefit. And I'm not exactly in a rush to customize my teaching methods for each type of learner on the basis of some unsupported theory. What would I do? Set up three different lessons for the same class? I barely have time to get through one lesson now. But isn't presenting scientific ideas through a variety of instructional methods, say, uh, combining a discussion with a web video and a visit to the aquarium's touch tank, a good idea? That's a great combination. See, cucumber and crab always is. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Is there a decent sushi place around here? Ugh. Multiple representations of a concept are typically more helpful to learners than just one. But studies show this to be true for all students, regardless of their preferred learning style. You ever wonder why there are finger quotes but no finger parentheses? Seems like a simple cupping gesture would easily convey the... Uh, you seem angsty. Think about it. Scientists don't work in a solely visual or a solely auditory way. They move fluidly through all of them, like these guys. How did he have this ready on such short notice? I'm trying not to think about where he keeps the film strips. Scientists engage in a wide range of practices as they investigate and build theories about the natural world. All students learn science concepts best when they're engaging in similar practices. Interesting. But if what you're saying is true and learning styles are just a bunch of, uh... Hogwash? Then how come they're so popular? Well, I think most teachers are eager to listen to their students, but sometimes they overinterpret students' assertions about the kind of lessons they like best. Ring a bell. Today, we're going to talk about deep time. Um, excuse me, Miss Reyes. Can't we just watch an episode of Cosmos? I'm a visual learner. I'll learn way more science if we just watch a TV show. <laughs> it sure does. Sometimes students latch on to learning styles as a way to express boredom or incomprehension. As if I could be boring? Many teachers might also view learning styles as a way to show parents that each student is being treated as an individual. But wouldn't it actually have the opposite effect? To sort students into styles makes them a type rather than an individual. Here, darn tootin'. You always were ahead of the curve. <laughs> Unlike Mr. Finger Parentheses. It'll catch on, just give it time. I should add that rejecting a learning styles-based approach doesn't mean you're denying the individuality of learners. For instance, Shauna is a terrific artist. Ooh. And Justine is a graceful and talented performer. To be or not to be. 
That is the question. That skull better not be from the skeleton in my closet. Skeletons in your closet? <laughs> Tell me more. Oh, boy. Luckily for these two students, science concepts can and should be presented in a variety of ways. Sometimes an idea is best taught with a diagram, sometimes with a story, or sometimes by physically touching the thing for yourself. But this probably depends more on the scientific concept than on the students. Well, I already try to mix things up by having my students, say, take measurements in one lesson and interpret pie charts in another. But I'm not sure scuba gear and molten hot lava are in the budget. Well, this ain't about budget. It's about approach. Learning to take measurements is a valuable scientific practice. Whether it's seahorses at the bottom of the ocean or a crayfish at the bottom of a tank, the key is to get your students' work to closely resemble how science is actually done. So you could have your class interpret a data set, say about average rainfall, to try and identify patterns. You could conduct a group investigation in the field. Or have your students make an argument based on evidence, like rock samples you give them. Those are some great suggestions. The logistics of getting a moose in here was really stressing me out. Why, thanks. And in contrast to learning styles, you're engaging all of the students' senses over time. Wow, it just hit me. I'm glad it's finally sinking in. No, no, the moldy empanada smell. Hey, maybe I'm an olfactory learner. Yeah, wake me up when he succumbs to the noxious vapor. He doesn't keep narrating when he's unconscious, does he? To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu forward slash good thinking.